Welcome back aliens, my name is Davin Reddy and in the last video we have talked about how can we implement Spring security but then we have just added the jar file right and when we ran the application we were getting this login page. The username for this was by default user and the password was generated by the application itself. So if you can see we got the password and when you copy this password let's go back to our thing and say enter. You can see now we can access the application. You can see we got welcome aliens. But then we don't want to have the system defined username and password. What if you want to have your own username and password? And that's where you need to do some configuration. Now what configuration I'm talking about? Now when you talk about Spring application, if you want to configure something, we can use annotations or we can create a class where you can provide the configuration. So let's create a simple class here and we'll name this class as application security config. Again, you can have any name doesn't matter. Uh, so I'm going for app security config. Let's click on enter. And here, if you want to do the configuration, we need to extend a class here, which is named as web security configure adapter. You just need to extend this class so that you will get all the configuration features. Now, since this is a configuration, we have to write add configuration, which is the addition which we normally use for the configurations. That's one thing. We need to add one more annotation by specifying enable web security, which will enable the web security for the application. So we'll simply say enable web security. That's it. We have to add this to annotation. Now, once we have done with this, we need to override two methods. In fact, let's go with the one method itself. And that method is, so let's say source override and the method name is user details service. So this is the method you have to override. Click on OK and this will override that method. Now we also need this object of user details service in our application and that's why you will simply write here at bean. I want this to be a spring bean. Okay but then we don't want this written stuff. Let's create our own because we want to have a username and password which I will define. Of course, you can fetch this username and password from database, but time being, let's go with in memory username and password. To achieve that, I will simply create a list of user details. Now, user details is an inbuilt class in Spring. Okay, first of all, I have to import list and then I can import user details. Now, you can see user details is an inbuilt class in inbuilt type in Spring Security. And now, once we got, uh, let's say, users equal to but then, okay, let's create a add a list for this, for all these users. But then question arises, how can I create users? Now, if you want to create a users, it's very simple, right? We can simply, since it's a list, we can simply say users.add. But you can see when you say add, it is asking you for the object of user details. I don't have any user details here. So what we can do is we can use a inbuilt class named as user. So we have an inbuilt class named as user. So we'll say user dot and you can see we have a method which is with default password encoder. Of course, right, when you work with the applications where you want to store the password, your password should be encoded, right? It can be a plain text or it can be a encrypted text. So time will go for the default password encoder, which is actually not recommended to go for, but for time being it will work. We then will say with a username. So we have to use a builder pattern here. So we have to say username. And the username I'm going for now is Naveen. And let's say I, I want to go for the password as well. Again, this is not a good way of doing it. Just for the experiment, we are doing it just for to understand how it works behind the scene. Uh, so we have user dot with default password dot username dot password dot. I can simply say build. Now what it will do is it will create the object for you, but I can see an issue here. Yeah, it says this method which is with default password encoder is deprecated, but that's fine. Again, we, we should not be using this, but we can, we will see that later. How do we remove that? And how can we use some other uh, encoding type? But as of now it will work. This is how you define your username and your password, but we still have issues. Now see Spring is not just about authentication, right? It's also about authorization. How can you specify your role in the application? Now you might be a admin, you might be a user. So here we can simply say dot, I can also specify the roles. You can see we have an option of roles where you can specify the list of roles I can go for. 
time being let me say this is just a simple user so i'm saying username naveen password one two three four and the role is user and then we can simply say build and then once you got this once you got the object of users we can add multiple users okay you can say users dot add with the same syntax we can say some other name some other password and some other role we can add multiple users of course right every application has multiple login and now i will simply return the new but then what should i return now since we wanted to return the object of user detail service which is not using any database here so we are using in memory database or not even database we'll say in memory there's a class which says in memory user details manager this is the class we have to use in memory user details manager and where you have to return the users that's it so this will take care of user details service now i hope this will work hopefully let me just relaunch the application so this time we'll not be using user and the password generated by the system to log in and you can see we, we are not even getting the default password now let's go back to our chrome and here okay first of all we have to relaunch it so let me say local uh, host i mean localhost colon 8080 and now it is asking for the user and i will say password or not user because let's say if you try with user and some weird password you can say it says bad credentials we want to say naveen and password is one two three four let's click on sign in and it worked can you see that that's how you can have your own username and password but hold on we don't want to use this we want to use database right i want to fetch my username and password from database how will i do that that we'll see in the next video so i hope you are enjoying this series let me know in the comment section and do subscribe for further videos